ready to start our next project. It is going to be Balloons Galore. And this is featuring Cue the Confetti from Hoffman Fabric. We just finished a Cue the Confetti quilt in our ticker tape parade, but it was such a fun and whimsical line that we did, ended up doing two patterns. So this is the second one called Balloons Galore. Balloons Galore. Uh, this one has this fun, whimsical pinwheel block here and applique balloons here. Very simplistic applique. It's perfect for someone who's never done it and wants to try it. But let's just take a quick peek at the fabrics and then we'll start cutting. So for the binding, we're using this really cute blue stripe. Then we've got the balloons for the outer border. Then we've got the tonals in here and the speckles. Those are gonna be the actual balloons. This is one of my favorite pieces in the line. This is the gumballs. And we're gonna use the gumballs for the sashing. And then the little balloons are used in the pinwheel blocks as the cornerstones. And then the background for the whole shebang is going to be this confetti on white. So I can't wait to get this one started. We're going to actually um, show you a couple different ways to do applique, how to finish the edges, and how to do these fun pinwheel blocks. We're gonna strip piece and do half square triangles for that. So stay tuned, we'll get this cut and we'll get started. All right, so the directions tell you how to make half square triangles the traditional way with the traditional cutting. So that is one method to do them. I'm gonna show you a second method, which is using this ruler, uh, the Creative Grids ruler, and how I do it to get a second way to do half square triangles. You can use either method. This one, you cut your strips at three inches. The pattern you cut at three and three eighths. So you use less fabric doing this technique. First, I use a large ruler as a tray. You can use a tray if you have that. And I'm gonna lay out the triangles as I cut them on here so I can just carry them over to the sewing machine. And the second thing I do is you take, we're going to need to make, let's, let's separate these. We need to make 96 balloon with stripe, or balloon with confetti half square triangles. So I take, Pair up the strips. All right, so we pair up the strips. These go with those. And then I take the two strips and I put them right sides together for the entire strip. And then I will take this over to the ironing board and press them. And by pressing them, they kind of stick together a little bit better before I start cutting the half square triangles. So we line it up and press it. So let me go do that. All right, so to use this ruler to cut the half square triangles, um, we take the strips and we layer them two together. So in this case, the balloon to the confetti because that's what the half square triangle unit should be. And I iron them together so they stick. And then I, in this case, I'm stacking them up. But how you stack them up, if you have a directional print, will make a difference. So in this case, we have the balloons that are directional. So I need um, one pair of each to get 24 of this, 24 of this, 24 of this, 24 of that. So to stack them up, you need one with the confettis on the bottom, the balloons are on top, and they're upside down. There's pair number one. And when you cut those, you get this. The next one is confetti on the bottom with the balloons upright. And when you cut this, you get this one. Then you need balloons on the bottom upright with confetti on top. And when you cut that, you get this one. And last, you get balloons on the bottom upside down, confetti on top. And when you cut that one, you get this one. So let me just double check here. When you cut this one, you get this. So this one is this one. This one is this one. This one is this one. And then this one is that one. So I'm cutting all of them at once. You may choose to cut one pair at a time. It just depends on how comfortable you feel cutting layers of fabric. I want to make sure everything is lined up accurate. Okay. So what happens is once we've get them cut, they will come once I've cut them, they're like this. 
So we use a large ruler like that and we would just align them on the ruler so you wouldn't open them up the way I have here. I'll show you here in a second. So you see they don't come up, they're ready to go right into the sewing machine. You don't have to separate them. And I just find this to be more accurate because you can use your quarter inch foot on the edge. You can use a quarter inch guide if you have it on your machine. Um, they are biased, but because we're cutting them in pairs, you don't have to handle them very much. Um, and you, do, you use less fabric. So those are some reasons why I like to use the ruler method sometimes over the traditional method. Um, but we write the patterns with the traditional method because we want you to be able to do this project um, whether you have a ruler or not. So that is why there's traditional instructions and now I'm showing you in the video another method. Now we need 24 of each color. So I've gone ahead and put the green tonal with the confetti and pressed it and then I folded the strips over so I will get two at a time as I cut them. So I did that for the green and for the blue and for the red and for the yellow. So we're just gonna go ahead and cut them the same way we cut the others and stack them up on the ruler. And again, we're getting, we need to cut 24, but I get two each time I make a cut, so I need to make 12 cuts. All right, so we have all of our Hascor triangles cut and laid out and ready to sew. We have 96 of the balloons with confetti, 12 green with confetti, 12 yellow with confetti, 12 blue with confetti, and 12 pink with confetti. So these, when we get to the part of the pattern where we need to sew our half square triangles, we're just gonna go ahead and run these through and start on the one end and we will be able to flip them and press them. So those are our half square triangles ready to go. So the next step to our balloons galore pattern is to get the balloons ready to be appliqued onto our long confetti strips. There are two different ways I'm going to show you how to do fusible applique. Um, the first one is the traditional method and the second one is going to be using my Cricut cutter. So let's get the iron set up here. So for the traditional method, all of our patterns come with full-size templates that are reversed. So for this one, it's just a balloon. That's all we need. So I'm going to use Fusible Web. And this is uh, TransWeb. I also like to use Heat and Bond Featherlight. So there's, there's two brands I really like. Uh, you have two sides to this fusible. It's a glue side, and then the smooth side is the paper side. So you take the template, you lay it underneath your fusible web, and you're going to trace it onto the fusible web. I like to use Sharpie Ultra Fine Point pens because the, the nib on the pen is the same thickness as your scissor blade. So you don't have a super fat line that you're trying to guess which side to draw the line on, or which side to cut the line on. So we're just going to go ahead and trace the balloon. And just remember the placement drawing, or the templates and the placement drawing for applique are guides. So if you're a little off for applique, it's not a big deal. It's not like when you're using a template for piecing and you need to have it be exact. And I learned a trick in drafting that when you are tracing something, you look at where you're going and not where you're drawing. So there's one and you can write, you know, that you, we need three Bs, two Cs, three Ds, two Es, and two Fs. So you have to trace 12 of these totals so you could label, you know, this is gonna be fabric B. And then if we were doing a second one, you just flip it over. You wanna leave about a half inch between your pieces when they're bigger like this. And again, when I'm drawing, I'm looking where I'm going and not where I'm drawing. And it keeps you on the line a little bit better. All right, once you trace them, then you roughly cut them out. And you wanna cut outside the drawn line, not on the drawn line because when we put it on the fabric and cut it, it will seal the edges and glue. So you see here, I'm just cutting it roughly. Okay, 
So there's one. And this is for fabric B. Fabric B is the tonal blue. So first you need to press your fabric to make sure there's no wrinkles in the fabric. I'm using this little tiny ironing mat for you, so I gotta make sure I'm on the mat. There we go. So you wanna make sure you get rid of any of these creases. So when you, cause when you press this piece down, you're basically putting the glue on the back of the fabric and you don't want a crease caught in the glue. So then we just put this guy on and we're gonna iron it. And depending on the product you're using, different products have different temperatures and different time for how long you press the fusible down onto the back side, the wrong side of your fabric. So in this case, this is a batik, so it didn't matter, but sometimes you'll have a print where it does and the paper goes on the back side. And then we go ahead and we're gonna cut it out on the drawn line. And when you cut, I always use the back end of the scissors so I have more control. And you'll see I move the piece into the scissor blade, not the fabric, I'm moving the fabric, not the scissors. And this is how you prep your pieces for the traditional fusible applique. This is how the directions are written in the pattern. Um, and next up, I'm gonna show you how to use the Cricut. The Cricut Baker is a machine that works with your computer and you upload an SVG file, which we will put up on the website that you could purchase for this pattern. And you don't have to do any of the tracing and cutting. We're just going to plug it in, load up the program and the file, and then load up the fabrics and it'll just cut them for us. So, but this is our this is our traditional balloon, traditional method for cutting the balloons. So for our second method of doing fusible applique, I'm going to use my Cricut Maker, which is right here. And I've taken the balloon template and turned it into an SVG file, which will be on the website, and put it into the Cricut software. And the software, I said I needed to make two, cut two balloons. So you, you take the balloon in. There it is in the Cricut software. And then I say I want to make it. And then I click on two balloons and apply. And then it will lay them out next to each other right on the border of the um, right on the red frame of the cutting area. And we have 12 inch, a 12 inch square for two balloons. So I took one and I rotated it, oops, rotated it around 180 degrees. And I pulled it down in a way and I'm pulling the upper one a little further down and away from the frame so that they're going in opposite directions. It just makes the cutter a little easier on the cutter. And I like to pull things down and away from that red cutting line they give you because sometimes I'm just, it cuts outside of the line. And I've calibrated the machine. I haven't quite figured out why. So by pulling it down, I don't have an issue. So once I have the two balloons and the cutting mat the way I want, I hit continue. It's looking for my machine. And then it says pick a material. I like to use medium fabric like cotton bonded. Um, and then for pressure, your next page, it tells you what foot you, your wheel you need. For pressure is on default. I always go to more. I'd rather have it cut through than have it, um, I go through the mats maybe a little faster, but I'd rather have more pressure than the default. So that I seem to have better luck with that. And it's asking for the fine point bl blade in the clamp and not the rotary blade. And that's because the end of the balloon has got some little detail to it. So I think the fine point blade is gonna work better for this. And I've already done a test, it worked great. So we're gonna leave that. So then once all of that's done, we have to prep our fabrics. So I'm taking the, the four fabrics we still have to make balloons out of. And I've ironed a 12 inch square of fusible onto the back, then roughly cut the fabric out. And then I'm using a rotary cutter and a square ruler to cut the edge 
just inside of where the fusible is. For the same reason we did it for the traditional method, we want the edges to be sealed with um, the fabric and we don't have, want anything flapping up because the Cricut blade can get caught on the edge and pull your piece in and, and really ruin it. So um, having a sealed edge is much, much safer. Now I've done it without it and it still works, but this is some insurance. So we're gonna do that. So now we have a nice clean piece. We take our Cricut mat. This is the pink fabric mat. You can use this or a light grip mat, the, the light blue one. And you put your fabric on the mat. And for the fabric grip mat, you really don't wanna to touch the adhesive with your fingers because it'll make it wear out faster. And we put it down. And then we use a brayer, especially across this top edge. And you brayer it all onto the mat because you don't want it to shift while it's cutting or it will cut in the wrong spot. So then once we have that down, we can load it into the machine. And then you hit the C for Cricut for go. And it'll take it in and it will cut it for us. And while it's doing that, I will get the next piece of fabric ready. This machine, we got it specifically because I like to do applique and um, it saves us a lot of time because we don't have to trace and we don't have to cut. We just have to prep the fabric and go. And the way I knew what size to cut is when I put those two balloons together, it's on a gridded mat and it tells me that I need a 12 inch square to get two balloons. Now I could have moved them closer and tighter and probably not used as much fabric, but I feel like if they have a little bit of room in between, they work better. So now this has been cut, but I haven't unloaded it. And I use it as a, a good practice is to flip up one corner of your applique and make sure the machine cut through. Because at this point, if it didn't cut through, I could re-hit the arrow button and it will cut it exactly on the same line. If I unload it, check it, and it's off and it needs more cutting, I will never get it to line up perfectly. So just check it before you take it out of the machine. If not, you can send it back through. And then, um, here we go. So we're gonna peel this off. And just like that, we've got our two balloons. Okay, so now we have all our balloons. We have two yellow, two green, two orange, three red, and three blue. And that's red or pink, I keep calling it either or. <laughs> it depends on how you look at it. All right, so we are ready to press these down on our background. So let me get the iron fired up and I'll show you how to do that. So we're ready to applique our balloons onto our background. And the background is the nine and a half by 60 and a half inch strip which is a pretty long strip to be working with. So what I do is I fold it in half with length end to end. So that gives me just half the strip to work with. And then I fold it in half this way. And I I'm going to crease, put a crease in it by ironing it. This will become my center line that I work off of to position each of the balloons. And then this is the center line for the halfway mark because three balloons go on the bottom and three balloons go on the top. So here it is with its center crease. Then we're gonna fold it in quarters and press one more time here. All right, so. We now know three balloons go here in the middle one. There's one, two, three, but now I have a middle mark for that one. I'm using the figure 17 and 18. And so this one has a blue, an orange, a green. And then on the second half is the red, the yellow, and another blue. So first we have to peel the paper off of all our applique. And I use a straight pin. I score the back to make it a crack and peel. And then I just peel off the paper. So 
This one goes, it's easier to take the picture and orient it the way your strip goes. So that way you can see where it goes. So in this case, this one is tilting this way. And then this guy, let's pull this up so we can do two of them. This guy is tilting this way. This one's probably tilted too much. There we go. And then the green is going to go that way. And you want the green closer because we're going to unfold this and we're going to have the bottom of this one. And same thing with this. So, so it's going to be maybe an inch, inch and a half. Then you've got almost three, almost three, inch, inch and a half. So that's the first round. And we're going to press them. Following the directions on the fusible you're using as to which, uh, how long you do it and how hot your iron should be. I'm going to tilt that one a little more. In the picture, the figure, this, is just a guide. So if you want your balloons tilted more, tilt them more. If you want them straight up and down, put them straight up and down. It's whatever you want. All right, so there's the first three. Then we're going to flip this over like this. That way I know that we're still working in the same orientation. So this is about an inch, inch and a half from the bottom. Again, about three inches between those. And the blue goes this way, and that's again inch and a half from the top and about three inches there. So we're gonna move that down a little. And then we're going to iron it. I am working off that center line. Um, I know it's hard for you guys to see it, but it's there and that's how I know where to put these balloons, so. And now I'm gonna show you about the balloon strings. Now the balloon strings are going to be either hand or machine embroidered, totally your choice. And so I'm gonna lay this out. Once it's cooled, which it is, I'm going to use a iron out pencil, a Frixton pencil, or you can use a chalk pencil. Um, I don't usually mark the front of my quilts with the Frixton pen, but uh, in this case, I'm going to put a line right on it, so I'm not worrying about if it shows or not. So I'm just gently drawing a line. Now in the illustration, I don't have a string at the bottom, but I think I'm gonna put one on. So I'm just going to draw a wavy line and the same thing here, and they, they look like the strings go behind the other balloon. So there's one, I mean, you don't need a template or anything. You're just drawing an arced line. The other thing you could do is you can also embroider right across the balloon right here. So it looks like it's tied around the bottom of the balloon. And I'm gonna show you on the machine, I use a machine embroidery stitch for this, so that one I don't like. So that's why I like these pens. I can just get rid of them and redraw it. Okay, so we'll be ready to take these over to the machine. I'm gonna do the blanket stitch around the edge. This isn't ironed down enough. And I will show you how I do those on the machine, the embroidery with the machine, um, so I don't have to hand sew them. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and blanket stitch this balloon. Uh, I use an open toe foot, that's number 20 foot, and that's open, there's no bar, there's no plastic. You just, you just want two little prongs sticking out. And on the foot, there's also, a, on our foot at least, there's a center line on the foot. Yours may or may not have that. That's extremely handy to put on the edge of your fabric. So we're gonna use that foot. Um, we are going to use the needle down function on my our sewing machines if you have it and that just keeps the finger, the needle in the down position when you stop so that you can pivot your piece around on that needle. It just makes it a lot easier to do this. When you do a blanket stitch to finish your edges you want to make sure you're starting on a big long nice straight area. If you start in this little area, it's, it's a little bit harder. So I like to start on the bigger area and work my way up to the little areas. Um, I did decide to go ahead and change to black thread to outline everything, because then I'm gonna do the strings in black as well. So it'll just make it pop more. Um, if you've never done this before, it is easier to match your threads. You're less likely to see if you're not 100% on. 
Um, if you use black and you're not on, it will stick out. But I'm going to go ahead and start, and then I'm going to show you how I use, do um, the straight stitching on the machine instead of hand embroidery. So to start with, you can um, put your needle down, put your foot down, and then bring the bottom thread up. Uh, that is one way to start. Uh, it's a good way to start in the beginning if you haven't done this. And then once you stitch, I'm going to stitch all the way around this balloon and come right back to where I was. So I will go over my first stitch with my last stitch and then reverse to lock it in place. You can also um, just do cut two stitches and reverse stitch back the first one. Or you can actually thread these needles through, um, thread, take these threads thread them on a needle, pull them to the back, and knot them. That is actually the official way to do it. I've never done it that way. I don't worry about it, but I wanna give you all the options. So I am gonna go ahead, stitch all the way around, and come back over my first stitch. When you're stitching, the blanket stitch has a straight stitch and a bite, a straight and a bite. You want the straight stitch to go into the background along the edge, and the bite to go into the applique. You don't want to go too fast if you haven't done this before. Another thing is I tell people it's just like quilting. You have to warm up. So it's handy to have a couple scrap pieces next to the machine to, to warm up on before you go to your piece. Uh, you can do a hearts or stars or just a weird triangle, just something with points and curves to help you warm up. So now that I'm at the bottom, you can see here I'm going to pivot the piece. I lifted the pressing foot up. I'm pivoting the piece around the needle because I have needle down. And then I'm going to go slow into this small area. And I will pivot as I need to. And sometimes you only get one stitch and you have to pivot. It really depends on how tight the corners are. And sometimes if you see where the stitch is, like it's not gonna fall right where you want it, you can actually hold your piece in place and force the machine to stitch where you want it to. Um, that takes a little more practice, but you can get there very easily. So then we've got the hard part done. We're just gonna zip around the rest of the balloon. And I am looking at the, the center point on my foot and I'm not looking at the stitch. I just wanna make sure that that center line stays aligned with my fabric. Sometimes if you're um, really struggling, just change your point of view and um, you'll, you may go smoother. And I go over my first stitch and reverse back. All right, now I'm going to do my straight stitch. And to do that, I wanna, Scoot this over so you can see the stitch I use. Zoom this up. I'm gonna use this stitch right here, but I'm not, there. it has two stitches on it. I'm using that one, the three vertical lines. It's number six on this machine. That zigzag is a secondary stitch, so just don't look at those. So I'm going to use that. So we're gonna bring you back over here and get you lined up. And then I'm going to use that stitch and I'm gonna drop the stitch. Oops, that's my needle down. I'm going to reduce the stitch length to just a little longer than one. So it's like 1.25, I guess is what it would be. And then I'm going to start, we're gonna start up here on this string because there's more to, to show you. This is a little short one. Um, I'm going to start on the long part of the string and then we'll do the balloon part second. So we're gonna turn this around and you can see how I've rolled up my fabric and kept it out of my way so I don't have a lot of bulk. I'm going to do the same thing I do for a blanket stitch. I'm going to drop my needle down. I'm going to pull it up. Pull my thread up. And I'm going to get everything aligned. And again, I'm using the center line on the foot and I'm aligning it with the line. And so this is basically, it's like a triple stitch. That may be what it's called. I don't know exactly what the correct term is. 
So you just have to let the machine go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So that's why I make the stitch length really small so that while it's going back and forth, it doesn't get all like um, frayed looking. It looks pretty consistent. And you just have to go slow and steady, but it's still way faster than hand embroidery, which can, you know, first of all, you gotta go find all the stuff. But if you like to hand sew, this is a really fun one to do. It's not really hard. And I would say use a back stitch and pearl cotton. Okay, so now I reverse stitched. Or if you have the knot feature on your machine, you can do that. Um, and then I'm just gonna lift this up and rotate it and position where I want it. And I'm just gonna do the tie now. And again, knot it at the end. And now, we'll clip all our loose strings and I will show it to you. And now it looks like I hand stitched that. And that's just using the machine stitch. So it's way faster than hand sewing. And because we do so many quilts for fabric companies that have very tight deadlines, we use the stitch a lot. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the rest of the straight stitches on and then we'll be done with this row. So we are on to piecing our half square triangles. And I'm over here at the machine and I've got my clearly perfect angle on my machine, my Q2's bumpers, Q tools bumper, and my quarter inch foot on my machine. And we're ready to sew. These are the half square triangles that I layered up over on the cutting. And I like using these tools to make sure my quarter inch is accurate. I do have a video on how to make a perfect quarter inch in our basics videos on YouTube. So you can take a, ch take a look at that and see how I set this up. So you just put the piece up against the bumper. You do not have to start right on the end. I always start about a 32nd to an eighth of an inch in so it doesn't chew it up. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start. And then I'm just gonna chain sew these pieces through, meaning I'm not gonna break the thread in between. And now you can see how quickly this goes together. All right, so now that we have them all chain sewed together, we're going to use our cutting gizmo from the Gypsy Quilter. This is on our website. It has a little uh, straight edge in there, but you can't cut yourself because of how it's receded. And you just pop these over the blade. One of my favorite tools in the sewing room. So now that you've seen how we do one set of half score triangles, I'm going to continue on and sew the rest of them. And then I will show you how we're going to put the pinwheel blocks together once we get these all pressed. And how we're going to press these is we're going to press them to the dark. So I'll just press this out. And then I'll also clip that dog ear. You only end up with doing the ruler technique. You only end up with a dog ear on one side. So. We'll finish those up and we'll be back for block assembly. So we have all our half square triangles sewn. I've clipped the dog ears off. I have the balloons all going in the same direction. Now we need to do our center here. And to do the center, we're gonna do a checkerboard and we're going to strip piece it so we don't have to cut a million little squares. So what we're going to do is we're going to sew the E and C strips together with the yellow and the green. And we'll sew the D and G strips together. And we're going to sew them lengthwise and then I'll come back and I'll cut them and that'll give us the top row and the bottom row of the checkerboard. So I'm going to go ahead and get these sewn and pressed. I am going to press them um, towards the green and the blue. And that way my seams will nest when I go to sew the, the four patches together. So we'll do that and I'll be back to cut the units. So I've got the strips sewn together and I've pressed this one towards the blue and this one towards the green. And what I can do now is you can go ahead and just cut them and then match them up. Or we can just lay this one on top of the bottom one and align that those two seams. That's why I pressed 
towards the blue and the green because the center seam should nest. So you can just take your finger and make sure they're nesting all the way down. And now when you cut them, you're gonna cut them in the same, they're gonna already be layered for sewing. So we're gonna cut, line it all up. We need to cut 24 of these at an inch and three quarters. So the first thing we're gonna do is get rid of the end that is not square. And then we're gonna go ahead and cut 24 of these. And then I take a square ruler like I did like I did here and I'm just going to layer these up and I'm going to open it up to see. So if you open it up before we sew, you want the green and yellow on the bottom, the blue and the pink on the top and sew on the right side. So I am actually going to turn this around and line it up. Now as I cut them, I can just lay them on the tray. So sometimes just a little bit of foresight will make your work a whole lot easier when it comes time to sew. All right. So again, square it off. Now I can just lay these on here and they're ready to sew. And I'm using the top of the strips, the bottom of the strips, and a horizontal line on the seam to keep myself straight. All right, so then we just pick them up and we sew them and then that makes our checkerboard. And then when we go to press them, if you just push the seams apart in the middle, you can press this guy up and this guy down. It makes this little checkerboard here in the middle. And that'll make sure these are nice and flat. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew all of these and press them like this. And then they will be ready to go in the center and the green matches the green, the yellow, the blue, the pink. So then we'll be ready to assemble our blocks. So we have all our half square triangles sewn and we have our four patch done for the centers and everything is pressed. And now we're ready to assemble the blocks. So the first thing you do is you sew these three together, these three together, and these three together. And when you go to press these, you press the top and bottom rows out towards the corners. So this way and this way. In the center row, you press towards the four patch. And that way, when I go to sew these together, these seams will nest and lay nice and flat for you. So then once you've sewn, got your rows sewn together and pressed, then you go ahead and you sew the block together to finish it. Then for these seams, I've decided to press them open. And how we do that is we use a strip stick. We sell these on our website at thewhimsicalworkshop.com. And let's pretend this is already not, not open yet. You press to turn it open with the purple thing. You take the tip of your iron and you run it down the seam and the curve of this piece of wood will help with gravity to flatten it out. And that way you can easily press your seams open and that saves you from having bulk at these four corners. So that's how we're gonna do all the blocks. We have to make 24 of these and then we will be ready to sew them into columns. We're gonna sew in vertical columns and we rotate the blocks as we sew them. So we'll do those. All right, so here are the rows all sewn and the balloons are all stitched. So now we're going to sew the sashings together and get the quilt top done and I will show it to you at the end. So here is our balloons galore all put together and ready for some quilting magic. Let me just zoom in to show you the rows. So we have our twirling uh, half square triangle star and our happy balloons going up and down the rows. And again, you can see I used the gumball as the sashing. 
with the narrowest gumball in between the rows, the two and a quarter for the sides, and two and a half for the top and the bottom, or the bottom, top, and the bottom. So anyway, there it is. It's a very fun quilt. It's a perfect, you know, throw quilt for a celebration of any kind or maybe to throw on a bed for a birthday. So we'll get a peek of it when it gets back from the quilter. So here is our balloons galore back from the quilter, all finished. Monica Chrome quilted this one and she did streamers and ribbons and stars all over it. Let me zoom in here, see if you can see some of it. There we go, some of the streamers on the darker fabrics. So this is a very, very fun quilt. It's a perfect quilt to have to throw on um, someone's bed for their birthday or just to have as a celebration quilt for any time something good happens. And this is Balloons Galore featuring Q the Confetti from Hoffman Fabrics. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you have, make sure you like and subscribe and thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have make sure you like and subscribe below. You can find The Whimsical Workshop on our website thewhimsicalworkshop.com and that has all links to all of our other social media platforms. Thanks for joining us.